Joining us this morning from Zurich is someone who has been warning of a demise in the U.S. economy for some time, said that stocks would be off their November highs from last year. He is, of course, none other than Mark Faber, the editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report. And Mark, uh, you're joining us from Zurich. We might be, uh, you know, here in the markets overseas, we might be a little bit jittery today. Uh, but I've got to say, markets have gone here in the U.S. in the complete opposite direction of what you called for almost a year ago. What gives, Mark? <laughs> well, uh, we have to clarify this statement. I was expecting a correction for now two years. I think we've gone up in a straight line from October 2011 up to here. We're three years into this bull market where we didn't have more than a 10% correction. And uh, this year has been irregular. So some indices like the S&P are up a modest 6%. And the uh, Russell 2000 is down 4%. 50% uh, of shares on NASDAQ are down 20% uh, or more from their recent highs. In Asia, we had markets like uh, the Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, India, Thailand, Pakistan, that are all up between 20% and 28%. Right. So when people tell me that the S&P has been such a great place to be, I have to laugh because emerging markets, in Asia at least, have done fantastically well. Uh, relative, <laughs> relatively speaking, yes, uh, they haven't performed as well as some of those other markets yes. uh, you're talking about, and Mark. And by the way, <laughs> yes, and by the way, last fall I was interviewed and I said I thought that at the time Treasury notes yielding 3% would be an interesting investment and the yield has fallen to below 2.5% and the dollar has been strong. So I don't know what you're complaining about. What do you mean you don't know what I'm complaining about? Hang on, hang on one second, Mark. Well, well you, we you make it sound as if I'm wrong about everything I projected. Mark, hang on one second, though, because we do have breaking news. We have ADP employment data. 213,000 jobs uh, were created in the month of September. That is uh, a little bit better, Mark, than what we saw, uh, than what economists had expected at 205,000 jobs. So 213,000 jobs, all of this leading up, of course, to the Friday labor report. But, Mark, okay, so getting back to your point, let me talk about this then. <laughs> uh, the U.S. economy, though, yes. has been continued to be, uh, to be recovering. Not as much as some have said, right? Uh, you've said before that the economy you believe is sliding, the global economy, in fact, is sliding into a recession. And we haven't seen that. And we have seen yields come down. We haven't <laughs> seen gold, uh, in fact, rally to the points that you have mentioned before, yes. Mark. Yes. I always said that uh, people should own some physical gold and store it outside the United States. This is an insurance policy that will pay off one time uh, big in future. I don't know when, I don't care when, but it is a, a safe investment and it's an insurance and part of a total portfolio that consists of equities, bonds and cash, real estate and precious metals. Number two concerning the global economy, I was talking in particular about uh, the emerging economies and the Chinese economy. And I was uh, saying a year ago already that in my view the Chinese economy had slowed down to growth rate of 4%. Now recently the economic statistics that were released, electricity consumption down year on year, railroad freight traffic down year on year, the Shanghai government uh, reported industrial production down year on year and exports down year on year and the other e Asian economies to which I travel are mostly flat no more growth there's one country I went recently which is a boom town it's Cambodia that is a boom town because it's become a huge laundry shop uh and you are seeing, of course, the shine taken off of, uh, of the markets uh, in China, particularly in light 
of these Hong Kong protests. But I want to get back, Mark, though, uh, to the U.S. markets here, uh, which you have said, which you just said a few moments ago, uh, we haven't gotten that correction uh, in the U.S. markets that you were looking yes. for. Uh, that in fact it has underperformed yes. the markets overseas, but it is still in a bull year. It is still in the fifth year of its bull run. So at some point, do you expect that that run is going to end as you predicted back in November? Yes, correct. I think uh, a most people haven't made that much money in U.S. stocks this year. Some hedge funds have made some money, and others have lost some money. It's been for many hedge funds a difficult environment. And usually when you have US dollar strengths, it means it's a sign or a symptom of tightening global liquidity, which usually hasn't been particularly good for US stocks. Now, if I look around the world, US stocks are very pricey compared to other shares around the world. Maybe they'll go up a little bit more like in 87 or before March 2000 and then they'll drop a lot. But in general, if you take the view of the next 7 to 10 years, I think you'll make more money in emerging economies where by near term, I think that all markets are vulnerable, all of them. Mark, but you also said though that you thought some tech stocks were pretty pricey as well, right? The Facebooks and the Twitters. Yes. Uh, and the Teslas, and in yes, fact, uh, they haven't been good shorts. Yes. If you did short those stocks, they've all actually, except with the exception yes. of Twitter, have risen even more to record highs. <laughs> yes, correct. You're right. <laughs> so what happened there? So do you think they're better value? You think they're better value now that they're up? I don't. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the time that I, I thought they're already overpriced. It's like. If we had this interview in March 2000, and you would tell me, well, in December 99, you said uh, tech stocks were expensive, and here they're up another 30 percent. Right. And so, I would tell you, yes, they're so up what another are, okay, 30 percent, so, and then they'll drop so 30, Mark, 70 percent. So what are investors missing but then? Look, what are they, go what and are buy they the missing? Facebooks. I, what are I, investors missing? I recommend to you, I, I recommend to you as a friend, Go and buy Facebook and Apple and Netflix <laughs> and Twitter and all these stocks. Right, and, and then, then I'll lose my time, shirt. Is that what you're talk, saying? And then you will see how much money you've made. <laughs>